here. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday week. And now you're getting back to the grind at your shops with full bellies, all that good stuff. So after Thanksgiving, coming into Christmas time, I always noticed at my shop I would start to get a lot of requests for beanies. I don't know about where you guys are, but here in Wisconsin, it is already getting cold. So it is definitely stocking cap season. Um, I'm going to walk you guys through a couple tips and tricks on hooping up your beanies and just the different ways to do it. I hope it helps along with um, your productions and yeah, let's get to it. I'm going to swap over my camera. We're going to get a desktop view and we'll take it from there. All right, so I don't have an overhead camera with me, so you guys will just have to bear with. This is the best view that I can get at the top of my desk. Um, a few things that you're going to need for beanies are some aqua topping. You can buy this right through Madeira. This is a water-soluble topping. It'll come off of some water. I usually use a spray bottle, and we'll get into that later. I just moved into my house, and I can't find my spray bottle, but I took this water bottle, and I poked a couple little holes in it with my... 7511 needle, so we will use that. A touch-up marker can sometimes really help you out with that. I'm gonna show you guys some tips with this. And then you need some cutaway backing. So I believe this is a two, two ounce backing, 2.5. Um, you want a nice stable backing. Uh, you don't want to use any tear-away backing on your beanies. With the spandex and everything on those, so what's going to happen if you're using this tearaway, you see how much stretch you got there? You use tearaway and there's nothing holding that text in place. Say you're just running text. Now when somebody puts a hat on and it stretches a little, you're starting to get alphabet soup in there. You just don't want that. You want nice, stable backing on these. Now these are 12-inch beanies, so it's got the cuff. The easiest way that to hoop these up is you grab them, flip them inside out, and now I'm finding the front and the back. So... I have my seam here, that's the front. I can see that it has a tag on the backhand side. So I'm gonna lay this down. And I really prefer to use the Ally grid hoops when I'm doing these. Um, it's really gonna help you line up your beanies on, on these hoops so you get a nice straight shot every time. The Malco Fast Clamp Pro, also a super great way to hoop these up. It's way quicker. Um, but I have my allied here and I figured I'd show a video with just a regular old hoop today. So I'm gonna grab my hoop. I always like to put my hoop in with my adjuster on the right hand side, that way if I need to make any adjustments, I can. And I'm just gonna slide that right into my beanie. I'm gonna move this up a little bit so you guys can see. Maybe I can move my camera down some. Now I'm gonna take my one piece of backing and I'm going to slide this up into my beanie. Once again, I'm trying to do this while I'm not in the way. All right. So you guys can see I got my whole hoop covered. I can feel it in there. I got my backing. And the bottom of my hoop is hanging out of this, this beanie a little bit here. So I don't want to bring that beanie all the way down in the hoop because... My sew area, you know, is like 2.25, maybe two and a half inches right here. So we don't have much real estate. So if I bring that all the way down, what's going to happen is if my logo is two inches tall, which this one is, we're going to lose all that real estate down at the bottom. So I always like to kind of get mine, you know, you got a quarter of your hoop sticking out to the bottom. Now, make sure you have your hoop going on the right way. So when you load it into the machine, what I like to do here is before I go any farther, we have all these nice lines on the, the ally grids. So I'm going to make sure I line that piece up with the same side, with the same um, notch on the other side. So I'm just going to gently rest this in there real quick. And you can see I'm kind of holding the bottom of my cap and this backing when I do that. And I slide up. I'm making sure everything's straight. That's looking really good there. Now what I'm going to do here is we're gonna use some aqua topping on here. So before I clamp this in, I'm gonna take this back off. I know I got it kind of where I want it to be. I'm gonna lay my topping on there. Now what that's gonna do with all the spandex and the stretchiness in these hats, that's gonna give us another layer for our stitches to sew out on. So I'll show you guys a quick sample after we get done hooping it, the difference it makes between having solving and not having solving on our hats. Um, it is a tremendous, tremendous thing. 
Make sure you have a nice underlay on your logo as well when you're running hats. Um, the sample that I'll show you guys here in a bit was set up for hats and it did not have a great underlay for the beanies. You want to try to knock down as much of that spandex in there as you can. Otherwise, you're going to start seeing some of it kind of pulling through in your satin stitches. So, I got my Solby on there. I'm going to line this back up. And I'm just going to push my hoop down. And you can see now, I have a nice solid hoop. And you can see that it's straight right across here. Now, one of the tricks that I've learned over the years too, is sometimes you can't see the top crease on your beanie here. So, I've found that if I take a touch-up marker, which all you guys should have in your shop. I can kind of see my line here, and what I can do is just bring that across real quick so that I have a good reference point on where the, the, um, the bottom of the seam is. So this is my sew space. You can see now we don't have much of a sew space, so if I would have brought that all the way down in the hoop, probably would have ran out of room. So that's this is the, um, the way that I've hooped these up forever. Using that Solvi and the touch-up marker to kind of find my placement. Super, super helpful. I've been doing that for a long time. So I just want to show you guys quick the difference between using Solvi and not using Solvi and also having a file set up correctly for hat or for beanies. Um, so this was the first one. My friend sent me over this logo to have on some hats. And you can see all these spots here. So this is with... Um, without Solvi, and this was not set up proper for the hats. So, doesn't look too good. You can see all that pull down here in the O. Just didn't turn out great. Now, fast forward to one that was set up properly for hats, and I used the Solvi. You can see how much of a difference that made. Nice and clean. All my satins are filled in nicely. I don't have much of a pull here, so that Solvi is just really adding another layer on top of your fabric for those stitches to fall onto. So you're going to get a nice clean sew out. Um, and when you're done with these hats, you don't have to flip them on your machine for the 12 inches. You just put them in, run them straight, and then when you're done, you clean them up and you pull this right back through. And boom, your hat is done there. So let's. I'm going to um, show you guys quick how to clean this up with another tip and trick. Let me go grab a hat that I have finished. And I will show you that. I'll be right back. All right, so we have our beanie hot, hot, hot off the machine. You can see our line really played, um, really helped out there with the, the hat. So I'm going to unhoop this. Now this is the best trick that I was taught um, when learning how to do beanies. So you take off your Solvi and just rip that off. Now keep some of your extra Solvi. This is where that squirt bottle is going to come in handy. Like I said, all we have is this water bottle. So I'm just going to spray down the front of the hat. Let that sit for a second. And if we take our Solvi that we had, we can just tap it on there. And it pulls all the rest of that Solvi out in all these tight spaces. This logo is not too bad, but some of them you get really small spots. Like say you have a little tiny letter A and you're trying to get in there. Uh, really difficult. So that works way better than sitting there and picking everything out. This trick absolutely has saved me so much time over the years. So really great stuff there. Um, then I would just trim this up like you normally would. Flip it out. Make sure you can see your beanie and trim out your backing. Uh, try to get it as close as you can to there. We just want that sitting in there so we don't get any of that alphabet soup like I was talking about. So. Yeah, that's about all that I have for you on beanie caps. So if you guys have any tips and trips, tips and tricks that you'd like to share with us, I'd be happy to hear it. You know, as always, comment down below. You can also send us an email over at applications at malco.com. I'm happy to answer any more questions that you guys have. And once again, I hope everybody had a great and safe, happy holiday. And I will catch you guys next week. Thank you.